What's happening, everybody? May 4th, Kevin. George. Real quick, we want to start things off before we start talking about sports with our friends over at GameStop.com. Yes. They uh, threw us some GameStop gift cards to yeah. tell you folks about the upcoming UFC Undisputed 2010 release. Yes, which is scheduled to be released May 25th. These guys over at GameStop have some really good promotions actually going on right now. Um, if you pre-order the game, what they're going to do is they're going to give you four exclusive fighters. Exclusive from the, to GameStop. So right. go pre um, for you people who pre-order your games, this is the reason you need to take your little tails over to GameStop. Right. Because you're going to get James McSweeney, Marcus Jones, the runner-up last year in the Ultimate Fighter House, Brendan Schwab, who and lost to... Court, us, our boy, Roy... Big Country Nelson. Hold right. on, belly. www.gamestock.com backslash UFC. Now, for you folks out there who have an Xbox 360, that's all you get. Now, for you people who have a PlayStation 3, three. and pre-order it, you get... Three UFC legendary fighters. And those three fighters are Royce Gracie, Dan Severn, and Jens Pulver. You also get five exclusive gameplay fights. And you get also five of the greatest fights in UF history, uh, UFC history on Blu-ray. Which is nice, because you folks who have a PS3 also have Blu-ray. Us folks with Xboxes don't have that. Right. Now, some of the promotions are going on. Actually, one of the promotions, the deadline is going to be May as 5th. you are watching this video, May 5th. And that promotion is basically, um, you can basically enter to win... Um, a fighter, a workout prize pack featuring right. three personal training sessions with UFC training gear, a home gym, home gym. and Marcus Jones. Fight, but right. Which is cool, because basically this dude's going to come to your house and train you for three sessions, which right. would be awesome. Now, like Kevin said, the daylight's May 5th. Right. So, so hustle over to GameStop, pre-order the game, and then give them all your information and enter this. Right. For you procrastinators, starting on May 6th and running all the way to May 15th, you can enter when the gaming hookup with a PS3... PSP 3000 and a UFC gaming bundle and early delivery of UFC Undisputed 2010. Um, you'll also get Brendan Schwab's Ultimate Fighter Pack. Now, for you people who feel like waiting even longer, or those first two didn't appeal to you, you can wait, and now the last sweepstakes runs from May 16th to May 26th. Right. This gives you, enters you a chance to win a UFC Fight Party Pack for you and 19 of your closest friends. Which I don't have friends. 19 friends, right. but just in case I did. But do I, you have room for the 50-inch TV with a 3D starter kit that they're offering you as well? Hmm. Now, and cash towards a year of UFC pay-per-view events. And we and know that can get expensive. Yes, and with the UFC putting out two events a month like right. they are this month, that'll get real pricey real quick. Yep. Now, a UFC swag and a Roy Nelson Ultimate Fighter Pack on top of it to boot. Now, if you don't think that's enough, here's last and certainly not least, you also win a chance to train a UFC fighter to play the game to right. UFC Undisputed 2010. The only kicker here is for you people who can't write and read, you're actually going to have to write a short essay on yeah, how yes. you would train the fighter, and then hopefully you get selected because then you'd have a chance to. And that yeah. runs all the way up to May 26th. May 26th. So the, th the key is, is there's a lot of things that GameStop's doing promotion-wise. It's kind of layered. Um, it's got all kinds of obvious great prizes and stuff. What you want to do, once again, is go over to www.gamestop.com backslash UFC 2010. Check out their landing page. It's great. It'll kind of give you a little bit more information in case you, George, and I missed anything. And for you folks who haven't had a chance yet, if you go over to the UFC Undisputed 2010 community page, because the demo's due out this Thursday, but if you went over there and signed up and had an account like I did, you got the demo last week. The demo's excellent. You get to play as uh, Machida, right. Shogun, uh, Rashad Evans or Rampage. Now, uh, word to the wise, don't fight against Rampage because once he gets inside and he starts throwing those uppercuts, right. it's over. The game is much faster this year. It's much more fluid. The submissions aren't in stages. So it's it's a great game. Um, I think we should both would agree that... Have you been that, like, going it all day long? Because I know that. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> George's like, uh, yeah. He yeah. just was on it. <laughs> yeah, the demo's sick. I've pretty much got... Machida's horrible. For yeah. some reason, they gave Machida a glass jaw. And anybody who's out there, I mean... If you know George as well as I do, if you tell him what your gamer code is, uh, he'll be yelling they're playing you. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's, anyway. that's how we started this week's show. Now, now on to the fun stuff. This weekend, this past Saturday night, a fight that was highly anticipated we waited for, Floyd Money Mayweather versus Sugar Shane Mosley in a 12-round bite. Bout, 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 bite? Yeah. Nice. That's about the bit. <laughs> um from what I heard, because I didn't pay for it, because I refused to put money in either one of their pockets, mm -hmm. Shane Mosley got uh, six and a half million. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayweather got twenty-two and a half million, and both got a chunk of the pay-per-view buys. Now, from what I from what I read, 
Sugar Shane had Mosley in a oh, Sugar Shane had Mosley. Wow, mm-hmm. Sugar Shane had Mayweather in his worst the, the spot in his entire career. It, it really round. did. It's in the second round. Mosley caught Mayweather, and for a while, I'm like, wow, I've never seen Mayweather get rocked this hard. And he held off Mosley's attack. I think if Mosley pressed it, I think if if it was Pacquiao in the shoes of Mosley, the fight would have been over with. It's definitely the most out of sorts that Mayweather's been in his professional boxing career. Mosley couldn't uh, finish the job. The fight ended up, from that point on, it went on pretty much as almost everybody predicted. Floyd being the great counterpuncher that he is, staying away, sticking and moving, sticking and moving for 12 rounds to get the unanimous decision. Sounds like a fun fight to watch. Right. Um, mm. I was at the bar getting tore up from the floor up, so it didn't really matter. I was in New York. Once I didn't it, watch the fight. It looked so. like five Shane Mosley's versus five or four uh, Mayweather's. Okay, now yeah. here's, here's a quick question before we move on. Greatest pound for pound boxer ever. Could even still be fighting. Who is it? Greatest pound for pound boxer ever. Uh, could, could still even be fighting. Could have just fought this past weekend. God, that's hard to say. Pound for pound. Who I'm thinking. I mean, I look at how many classes Pacquiao's gone well, through. Well, let, let me let me let me show you where I'm going with this, and then see what you think. Floyd Mayweather was asked. Who is the greatest pound-for-pound boxer of all time? He said himself. My problem with that is, yes, I don't know a whole lot about boxing. This is where you can jump in. Mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather has not fought any fighter with the exception of De La Hoya, who's going to the Boxing Hall of Fame, and he fought De La Hoya at the end of his career. Somebody like Muhammad Ali fought everyone that was in front of him, everyone that was behind him, everyone that was next to him, and he has a plethora of fighters who have are in the Boxing Hall of Fame right. have potential. So I don't understand how people can tell me that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest boxer pound for pound of all time. I disagree with that. I'm going it's, with Ali. Right. I'll, I'll, Ali because he, he came back on just several times and won the title back and stuff like this. He had a tremendous layoff with the whole Vietnam conflict and everything. Um, I, I think as much as I love Manny Pacquiao, you can't put him in that either because he's not. he hasn't really fought any. I mean, everybody's in the latter end of their career in there. Um, I, I think Ray Leonard... Um, during that boxing era, you saw some great welterweights during that time. Thomas Hitman Hearns, Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, our boy Big Ragu can probably go a little bit more in depth about this because he is just a boxing fanatic. But uh, but I just don't think as of late you've seen anybody that can be considered the best pound-for-pound pound boxer of all time. Okay. Because um, if you ask Floyd Mayweather Jr., the only thing you could say about Ali is he lost to Ken Norton. He lost to Ken Norton. He lost to Ken Norton. Look, hats off to you. You're undefeated. It obviously takes a phenomenal amount of talent to do what you've done. What, over 40 fights? Yeah. He hasn't lost yet. Yeah. But in my opinion, you haven't really fought anybody. When he fights, if, if and when it happens, and I think it is going to materialize now, when he fights Manny Pacquiao, and if he is to get the win over Manny Pacquiao, oh. then hats off to him. I think you're going to also come, you know, get in that category. Um, moving out of boxing, well, and into maybe fighting still, UFC, what is it, 113? Yes, it is this weekend. weekend. It is going to be a matchup from the controversial decision of Shogun Hua versus Lyoto Machida. Now, for you people out there who are balling on a budget, or you're not really balling, or you're going to the bar, or you're struggling to pay for these things... Right. If you're like me, you kind of look at this card, and then you look at the card later this month, and you're trying to figure out where do I put my 60 bucks. I'm going to put my 60 bucks with Rampage and Evans fights, because that yeah. is going to be some good-ass shit. I don't give a fuck. But not to get away from what Kevin wants to talk about, UFC, uh, what's this, 114? This is 113. 113. 113. I mean, George and I can't even keep up with the numbers now. No, um, crazy. It's, it's a decent card. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be interested to see the, the matchup with Daly versus Koscheck. Oh, um, that, yeah. that could be a good fight. I, I, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, um, if he tries to stand with Daly, he might be snoring. He says he's going to, but if we, might look what Koscheck's done his last couple fights out. He's shown improved stand-up. Yeah. I want to see, I have a feeling, as much as Koscheck says he's going to you know, keep this standing, I, I'm going a, I'm to a knock him out. I think once you get touched once by Paul Daly, you're going to realize, I need to get this to the ground. Right. That's what I have a feeling. Now, right. The fight of the night that just has me scratching my head is no other than Kimbo Slice versus Matt Mitrione. This fight makes no sense to me. These two guys are going to stand and punch each other in the head. Kevin will wake up. And the reason this doesn't make any sense to me is Kimbo Slice is 215. What? Matt Mitrione is 265. Right. You're giving away 50 pounds. Right. He has to try to get to 205. Has to. Yeah. Kimbo Slice, that is. It's just make, this fight makes no he sense. He could do it off the sauce, man. Uh, this fight makes no sense. Take that and some albuterol. I'll be all wired out. Trying, ah, ah, ah. Oh, sorry. Anyway, um, yeah, that fight will be interesting for all the big internet followers of Kimbo Slice and stuff. And George and I are definitely one of them. Um, 
you, you're always interested to see Kimbo Slice get in the ring to see what he can do against some of these other fighters. Matt McCarron's really nobody special. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, if he not, if he beat if he knocks Kimbo Slice out, I mean, I think that puts him. I, I don't I see. I think Matt, that puts him where Seth Petrozelli is. Where is he at right now? Okay, next hey, subject. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's get to the main fight. The, okay. the reason everyone's going to tune in to watch this, it's Loyota the Dragon Machida. I have, by the way, I drank my own urn. And versus Mauricio Shogun. Who, who do you got in this? I'm going with Shogun. You're going with Shogun. Yeah, I, Shogun won the first fight. I, I'm going with Shogun. This is the thing. This is what scares me. I'm not going to say who I'm going to go with right now. But I, I, I do want Shogun to win the fight um, because I thought he did win the first fight. But I tell you what. Machida's camp has sat there and analyzed that, and it's as well as Shogun's fight. And they, they've determined that those leg kicks and keeping that distance is basically what lost the fight for Machida. Right. It's him establishing those leg kicks. So I would have to think if they've got a smart camp, they're not going to allow that to happen. And this is my prediction. Whether it happens or not, I don't really give a shit, but I'm just going to give you guys my prediction, okay? So fortunate enough that you get it. Whatever. Um, I think Machida is going to press him early. I think he's going to. I think he's going to come on attack. You think Machida's going to press? I think he's, normally he's a counter striker. Yeah, I think he's going to. I think he. He'll. You know, he'll fill him out, get his distance and stuff, and then I. I think he'll try to press the fight to see what happens. You know, he is the counter striker. Uh, striker usually, you know, he waits for an opening and takes advantage of that. But we saw when he fought Rashad Evans that basically he can go on the attack because Rashad Evans he had him doing the stinky leg and his mouth open. He was just sticking the shit out of that band. I was like, dang. It looked horrible, as Charles Barkley was saying. Now, horrible. Time to move on. That That's what we think of the upcoming UFC card. Right. I don't know if either one of us watched could watch it. Um, right. Maybe you guys could fill us in. Please now, do. on to something that happened Monday night in Philadelphia of all places. Some overzealous Philadelphia Phillies fan decided he was going to jump on the field. You know what the cop did for the Phillies? <laughs> Boom! Shot him with a taser. Sure did. I saw, <laughs> have you seen a video clip of this shit? It's crazy. It's crazy. And the guy... Dad at Des Moines, like, go ahead, son. Go out there in front of millions of people, make a fool of yourself, and get shot the shit out of you. Well, no one, when would, it, it, it just don't happen. I, Normally, you run on the field, you run around from some fat donut eating cop, you hit him with a juke, hit him with a stiff leg, you get by one or two, and somebody tackles you. No. In Philly, they don't play. He's right. like, man, bing. I'm going to tell you what, they don't play in Philly, and they don't play down the street in Arlington, too, because did you hear about what happened? Because you know, you were gone, you were in New York City. This motherfucker, right? was naked as shit in his apartment complex going ah freaking out they said motherfuckers going crazy called security security said we ain't fucking with them called the police they rolled up in this guy's apartment he was butt naked screaming going crazy getting ready to attack the, the police balls and dick and shit swinging the police were like we're not having it Bang! taste that nigga he died on the spot dead <laughs> Now, Sorry. continue with other jacked up things for the the story that's coming out of Dallas. Yes. Here's my opinion of this boy. Okay. Of this man, of this child, of whatever. My opinion, Des Bryant will be out of the NFL in four years or less. Oh, calm down. Relax. I know. It just sounds that's crazy. That's your Cowboy fans. Yeah. Um, you're giving him number 88. You're hyping him up. His head is starting to swell to gigantic proportions, and he hasn't done anything yet. His mom has been busted umpteen times for selling crack. The question was asked, Mr. Bryant... Is your mom a prostitute? Where would they come up with that one? Supposedly, Des Bryant goes, my daddy's a pimp, and my mom works for him. Well, you know what? I don't know what too many women who work for pimps do, but they're normally prostitutes. Pretty much. So, you were getting off to a very rocky start. Yeah. Started off at your pro day, you didn't wear cleats. Now there's a rumor your mom is a prostitute, but in reality, she just sells crack. Right, which really doesn't matter about his ability to catch a football. I just, I don't, I don't, I mean, your future is very just, bright. He, he's just bringing a lot of bad media to the Dallas Fort Worth area, which they don't They've really already had with the Pac Man shit. Jones, and them, yeah. Tank John, I mean, come Who's on. currently in Cincinnati trying out. Yeah, I just. The thing that freaks me out about Pac Man Jones, real quick, and we're rambling, I love when we do shows like this, but uh, it is, he's only been in the league like four or five years. I didn't realize that. And he's rock. I mean, did you see him watch try to play for Dallas? He's rotten. He's so, I mean, he's just out of it. He needs to get into a team, get the continuity, yeah. and get back to playing. But right. back to Des Bryant, I I hope you can keep your head above all this and separate yourself from everything that's going on. But it, in my opinion, if you continue to go this route, four done. years or less. Right. Done. He'll be when his rookie C contract's done. He might be done. Yeah, he'll be playing for the CFL. See you bye. Or, uh, or one of the Montgomery County and, and, can, and seriously, can we stop with the Brett Favre shit already? Look, granddad, sign or don't. 
Get your ankle fixed or don't. Fixed or don't. Well, yeah. he says he doesn't need to. So it's getting old. Nice this is stuff. what three years in a row now. Just as far as the doctor, I just want to let you guys. Know. They should have signed Jimmy. Well, they should have drafted Jimmy Clausen and told Brett Favre. Jimmy Clausen, terrible son. Hey, we'll find terrible. out. Now, speaking of things, the NBA playoffs. Ooh. Okay. What Cavaliers was Cleveland got wrecked last night? I said that shit, man, to my buddy. He didn't want to hear my buddy cares. Like, man, Cleveland's going to run right through Boston. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you what. When you have Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. And now, John Rondo, you have a team that has a lot of tenacity. Those guys do not just show up. Those might be three of the oldest black men on the planet. They might be three old, but they're three of them that just don't give a shit. You know what I mean? And that's scary, man. When you've got somebody that wants to win and is hungry and has a lot of passion for the game, it's scary with that many type type of players on one particular team. And the Boston Celtics had that, as much as I hate to admit it, because I'm a Los Angeles Lakers fan. Or, as I said last week, a Los Angeles Lakers fan. Um, but that series is currently tied at one apiece. Um, the Lakers, I just don't see Utah presenting a problem for them because Utah is extremely banged up right now, and the Lakers seem to be uh, doing what they need to be doing, even with Andrew Bynum hobbling all the time, which George made a point clear to me earlier this year that he has made a paper. And you're right. High five to you, man. <laughs> Um, Phoenix and San Antonio. No, I don't really care about that, the, and no one else does. <laughs> right. The one thing I want to talk to you about is Kobe Bryant will be 32 this summer, right? right. How Can you imagine that? 32 and you're being called old. Right. That's all they said. They said, you know, he's old, he doesn't have the step he used to have, he gotta, he's got to find more craftier ways. Now, I watched the last two or three minutes of that game, mm-hmm. and I know you and I tend not to see shit eye to eye, right. but this is what I saw. Kobe Bryant made up his mind, and he was going to the basket, and he got touched they were calling a foul. Right. Now, I understand the superstar treatment. Mm-hmm. That's horse shit. Because there's one where he went to the basket, and they didn't touch him till like that until after he landed. Right. I'm like, what the but, fuck? But, but, but Durant was getting worse. It was worse with Durant. But, were they playing Durant? Oh, no, they were playing Utah. No, but Durant, when they were playing Oklahoma City, the, the Thunder, they were getting more calls than the Lakers. That shit's retarded. Yeah. I, I don't get it. And it's not a knock on Kobe. No. I'm sure the same thing happens with LeBron. It happens it with just, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Just because... Kobe Bryant or LeBron James or some other superstar who's making more money than God takes the ball to the basket and they touch him, that's not a foul. The other stuff that's that he doesn't... That's shooting hand, son. I don't care. You gotta let him shoot the ball. Shoot, dog. Whatever. I don't understand basketball. Shoot, dog. I'm telling you. That's why I like football. I know. San Antonio and the Phoenix Suns. What do you think? I think that San Antonio is playing great, but I think the Phoenix Suns are just going to run up and down the court and give them old fools heart attacks because they are the oldest team in the NBA. Also, you got the Orlando Magic. Orlando Orlandic? Magic. Well, what's what's in Orlando? I don't know what the city Orlando is. We got the Orlando Magic uh, facing <laughs> off. Orlando Magic facing off against the Atlanta <laughs> Hawks over in the East. Atlanta did kick kick. Atlanta. I I think Orlando is going to. Yeah, the Orla- I, Orlando is going to be the team coming out of the East, and that's coming from a person who's a Cleveland fan. Right. Orlando's um, just nasty. Yeah. I mean, it's a wrap. Um, that's it for the show. That is it for the NBA. We're a ghost, and we'll catch you guys next week. Peace. I'm Oh, and for you local folks, Strasburg is now getting caught up to AAA. They said he will be playing for the Nationals within the month.